let's learn how to read Java code. All right, welcome back to the Java introduction for Minecraft and Hightail modding. And in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to read Java code. Of course, this is sort of a tongue in cheek way of phrasing this, but I want to basically present the Java syntax. So what we can, well, basically learn from the code and how we can read it. And the idea is that, well, first of all, we've already seen this. This is a comment, right? So two slashes here, then everything afterwards is a comment. And we also can read from this comment code is read from top to bottom. So we have to start here and then go down. This is also why we have these numbered lines. Those are basically, well, those are called the lines. So if I say, hey, there's something wrong in line 11, then you can go, oh, line 11, all right, here it is. And then there might be something wrong there. So that's why these lines are numbered. That can be very important and very useful, especially if you go into more complicated, well, programs then you know classes and files individual files can have up to i mean thousands of lines in theory although there are some practices that well you want to reduce the number of lines so line count itself is not a sign of quality i can assure you that so that's you know usually uh, that that is not the case and so we have the single line comment and then there's also multi-line comments so that would be slash and then a star and then a star and a slash to end that comment. And this is just a multi-line comment. You can have multiple lines there. And if, if I press, you know, the enter key, then you can see that I always basically uh, get a new line that is also a comment here. And now we come on to the most important things. So I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit here. And that is declaring a variable. So declaring a variable works in a following way. We type in the data type that we want this variable to be, and then the name of the variable. And at the end, we end this line with a semicolon. What you will notice is that every line we have in here, right, ends with a semicolon. This is usually the case. So when you have one instruction, you always write one instruction in one line and end that with a semicolon. Now what's very important is that it doesn't have to be necessarily the end of each line. So for example, if I go in here, I can also make a break here so I can press enter. And then here, of course, I don't need a semicolon, even though this happens in this another line. Now, this is also a formatting, which is like absolutely, I mean, I would even go as far as to say this is absolutely disgusting formatting here because that's not, that's definitely not good to read because what you need to keep in mind is that when you're writing code, the code that you're writing isn't only so that the computer does the correct thing that you want it to do. It's also so that you and other people can read it. And you reading it also includes you in six months, which for all intents and purposes is basically another person as well. That's like very, very important to keep in mind because, you know, you can write code quickly and it works, but real code or, or good code, clean code, is really code that you and other people can read very easily and understand very easily. So that's just one tiny thing I wanted to mention. So declaring a variable simply means that I have now created an i here that, you know, is an integer. And then I can also assign this variable a certain value. And I'm doing that with this equal here. And I'm going to type in i equals and then whatever value I want to assign it. And then once again, end the line with a semicolon here. And what's very interesting about this is that the equal sign here is the assignment operator. And it actually doesn't quite work how you know it in mathematics, because in mathematics, whatever is on the right side is equal to the left side. And what is ever on the left side is equal to the right side. That's not quite how this works. So this is cited. I can't type in 30 equals I that that doesn't make any sense in side of the basic you know in the in the code here that doesn't make any sense so left is basically the variable and then right is the value that is being assigned to this variable that's the idea and then you can put both of those in at the same time so declaring and assigning at the same time is then called initialization and here you can see we have an integer x which is equal to 10. so this is basically the declaring and the assigning all in one line and that would be, be called initialization, right? So overall, that, those are sort of the three main things that are very important. 
And then there's one other thing that I wanted to show, and that is accessing variables and methods of objects. So first of all, the name variables should at least be a little bit familiar to you as of this tutorial. So a variable is just you know some sort of data container that contains some sort of value. It might be an integer, it might be a float or a character, but it is some sort of container that contains a certain variable, a certain value of a certain type. So that should be sensible when it comes to variable. A method, you shouldn't know what that is. If you're a complete beginner, that's totally fine. And what an object is, you also don't quite know, and that is also perfectly fine. We're going to find this out in later tutorials. However, what I wanted to cover already is that on certain variables, like this string here, what you might have noticed is that the string doesn't have a color like the integer does. Or if I put in a float, you can see that this is also orange. So those have colors and this one doesn't. There's a little bit of a difference here simply because of the fact that the int and the float written like this are the primitive data types. That's sort of the idea. And the string isn't quite a primitive data type. However, it's sort of at, at this point, it's sort of being used as such. However, what you can do with it is you can type an S. So this is the name of the actual variable here. And I can put in a dot. And then you will see, I, I can actually move this around here. Uh, I can make this a little bit bigger. You can see there's a lot of things that are being basically recommended to me what I can call. And those are basically the methods that I am able to call on a string variable, right? So in this case, a string variable brings with it some functionality behind the scenes, which I can call. For example, this length all here, right? If I hover over this, you can see it says that, first of all, it says here a warning. This is why this is sort of yellow here. This simply is because we're not doing anything with this, but that's totally fine. But then here, it basically says what is happening. And what is happening is that this returns the length of the string, as you can see, returns the length of this string. So if I call this on this hello world, then it's going to return the length of the string as an integer to me. So that's sort of the idea. And a method is always called with the name of the method and then parentheses. Sometimes we even write something into the parentheses and thus can change what comes out of the actual method call. But this is something we're going to see along the way. So this is sort of the general gist of sort of how to read code and the Java syntax. What's very important here are basically those three steps, the declaring of a variable, the assigning of a variable, and then sort of both of them together, the initialization of the variable, and then also that we can access variables and methods of certain, well, objects and variables with this dot operator, so to speak. And this is, of course, something we're going to see sort of in action very, very soon. So this is something that we're going to see in later tutorials. But for the time being, this would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would, of course, appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.